Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. A team of astronomers is claiming to have observed an object whose existence shatters the underpinnings of the Big Bang theory. The Quasar group, called Huge LQG, is supposedly so enormous it would comprise roughly 5% of the observable universe. By conventional reasoning, an object of this size simply could not have formed since the theoretical Big Bang explosion. According to lead author Dr. Roger Close, the finding upsets the foundation of everything we do. But as is so often the case with baffling space discoveries, are we being told the complete story? The question that arises from this recent finding of a gigantic quasar cluster, which according to the headline, shatters long-held theories of space, is that uh, it actually shatters the long-held theory of the Big Bang. But that's not specified. It's just uh, put in general terms because, of course, there is no alternative to the Big Bang theory at present, or at least there isn't, according to conventional science. Of course, the Electric Universe sees all of this as being confirmation of Halton Arp's work of decades ago, where he actually predicted that these highly redshifted objects, the quasars, would appear to be larger and larger and brighter and brighter the higher the redshift, simply because of this idea that the redshift is a measure of the distance. Now, Halton Arp has shown, and the Electric Universe actually expects that quasars are merely faint because they're young, they're just been recently hatched, so to speak, from a parent galaxy, and they're highly redshifted. But they are born from nearby galaxies, so these things are much closer than the 9 billion light years that is specified in the article. This large quasar group, they call it the huge quasar group, it's almost 9 billion light years away. That's if the distance is proportional to redshift assumption that they make is true. It's 4 billion light years long. The press release says it would take 4 billion years to cross it, which makes it sound like it's more or less spherical. But actually, it's only 1 billion light years wide. It's actually a filament. The paper that reports on it says discreetly that it's substantially elongated. That's quite a bit elongated. It covers 20 degrees of the sky. You could put 40 full moons side by side along the length of it. Of course, it's thin. It's not anywhere near spherical. The sizes come from the assumption that the distance is proportional to its redshift. Its redshift is 1.27, and the magnitudes of the quasars in it range from 18 to 19. There could be some fainter ones because the survey arbitrarily cut off at 19. It lies 25 degrees west of the Virgo cluster, and the magnitude range of the objects in it are similar to the Z equals 1 quasars that, are, that Halt and Arp has associated with the Virgo cluster. It overlies three Messier galaxies, M95, M96, and M105, which are a little bit closer than the Virgo cluster, according to the standard reckoning. Uh, so it's, it's kind of on the fringes of the Virgo cluster. And my first guess is that these quasars are actually ejections from these Messier galaxies at the edge of Virgo. So if they're at the conventional distance of the Virgo cluster, then this huge group is only 20 million light years long instead of 4 billion. It's 200 times closer than what they think it is, and it's only a half of 1% as big as they think it is. The result of the distances proportional to redshift assumption is that astronomers are looking at gnats swarming around their heads and thinking that they see fleets of 747s on the horizon. The observational evidence that undermines the distance is proportional to redshift assumption has been known since the 1980s from the work of 
Paul Narp, who noticed that these high redshift quasars had a statistical and oftentimes a physical association with nearby active galaxies. Standard astronomers have ignored this evidence, and they've backed themselves into not just a corner, but a very long dead end. If redshift is not primarily a measure of distance, then the expanding universe and the Big Bang cosmology are obsolete. The astronomers' observations of huge LQG also challenge the cosmological principle, which theorizes that the universe is homogeneous or the same in all directions. The cosmological principle actually goes back to Newton. It's the assumption, again, there's that assumption, that we don't occupy a unique place in the universe, that at, at sufficiently large scales, the universe will look the same from every point within it. So if this holds up, this would mean that at the largest scale, the universe is not homogeneous, that this clump of matter couldn't have uh, developed from gravity since the Big Bang. Notably absent from media coverage of huge LQG is any meaningful discussion of the predictive success of the astronomer Halton Arp. It really is scandalous that Halton Arp, a noted astronomer of his day, who predicted that this kind of observation would be made, is not even mentioned in the article. And in fact, I've seen no comment anywhere in the news items at all about Halton Arp's work which predicted this kind of finding. You would expect that a finding which goes against what is generally believed and something that is predicted would be headline news and that Halton Arp should be singled out for recognition. Instead of that, we see nothing, silence, and there's waffling about long-held theories of space without saying that the Big Bang theory has actually been disproven. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.